Today in the UK, another 87 people will find out that like me, they have epilepsy. How did your life change when you got diagnosed? It was only seven things at the time, so it was quite a big thing when you're going through all your exams and still really trying to find out who you are and what you want to do with your life. It knocks you back a bit and it is quite scary at the same time because you just don't know what's happening. Like you just wake up in an ambulance one day and you're like, okay, that's up. But I was still uh, it was three days away from doing a driving lesson, but I'd say it's changed my life. It's kind of like uh, made me realise that some people can be negative towards it first time I had the seizure, the police came on the bus and on, they're all like, they were questioning my friends, been like, is he definitely not taking any drugs and all this? And I was like, nope. So how's it affected you in your life? So I got diagnosed when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I got diagnosed when I was 13. Yeah. So it didn't massively affect yeah. me. And then I started getting tonic clonics when I was like 20. And I get them because um, sun like through trees, like the oh, sunlight really? flickers. And that gives me tonic clonic seizures. But I didn't know that, so I used to have them when I was like, like on a run or on a walk, uh -huh. but I'd be by myself. So like the first one I had, I called my sister and I was like, you'll never guess what, I've just slept walked into the um, woods and she was like, you definitely haven't, <laughs> like it's three o'clock. So it started to affect me a lot more mm -hmm. then, because I was a bit more scared I, of like doing things yeah, by I myself. When I first got diagnosed, my hair started falling oh, out and I put on like loads of weight. I would not recommend that as a 13 year old girl. <laughs> I don't know, but oh. I know what that is, you know. But then it's been 10 years so my side effects are fine, yeah. apart from the memory. Yeah, I have tonic clonic seizures. Um, I have them more frequently, but I do also have partial seizures where just my right side of the body is shaking. I don't get any warnings but sometimes I do have a taste in my mouth but it's almost like my brain can't process to get myself to safety so by the time I've processed what's going to happen it's too late and then it almost just takes over and then I just black out and then I don't remember anything after that. I was 14 years old um, and I remember this day like it was yesterday um, I was getting ready to go to school and then I just fell and just dropped. And then because I just, I kept having them afterwards as well, then they had to investigate it. What about? I have tonic clonic seizures. But Lucy also suffers from absent seizures and that's when it all started. Okay. Um, she would have absent seizures um, on a regular basis mm -hmm. um, where she'd be completely blank. It was yeah. as if her body was being taken over by someone and she was talking gibberish as well. The more frequent she had the absent seizures, she yeah. then started having a tonic clonic seizure, which was massive, massive. Okay. I got it when I was 14, but it was kind of a relief because then we finally knew what it was so we could try and sort stuff out. It was a bit stressful because we had to like adjust to what it's going to be like living with epilepsy. Yeah. And what about you, Mum? How was that frightening you? Because when Lucy was having the absent seizures, we eventually got referred to the neurologist mm -hmm. and they were, right, okay, so let's do all these tests, ECG, EUGs, yeah. MRI scans, because yeah. we're going to eliminate, like, it's not epilepsy. Mm -hmm. And then we got that phone call saying, yeah, she's exactly. got epilepsy. And we're like, no, 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 you said this was to eliminate it, not yeah. to confirm it. And it was just a big, big shock. Yeah. Big shock because we didn't really know anything about epilepsy. Mm -hmm. And, well, it was just a, a shock to the system, wasn't it? Mm. We've got loads of information, booklets from Epilepsy Action helping us to sort, like, kind of get used to how to live with epilepsy mm -hmm. and what I can do and what I can't do. Yeah. yeah. I was first diagnosed with epilepsy when I was 10. So it started as absence epilepsy and then it kind of levelled out and was under control and then when I got to 16 and started my GCSEs then it developed into tonic clonic seizures so at that point it developed into a I think a more serious level. I've been probably about two years now seizure free so wow. I've managed to kind of find a way to um, balance my life so epilepsy isn't so much of an issue. And how about yourself? I have two boys, twin boys, who both have severe epilepsy. 
they have tonic-clonic absences, they have the focal seizures and they also have drop seizures as well and it really, wow. really affects them. So hearing your point of view as well, somebody who has epilepsy, mm. how good at control you've had, it's really, really good. And I think we're kind of the other end of the spectrum to you with mm. our boys, but it's really nice to be able to see how living yeah. with epilepsy, you can still carry on life as long as you've got better control. You try to give them the best way of life possible. And as a parent, I think you feel that the epilepsy still controls what we do as a family. And that's the hardest part. If ever there was a miracle cure, I would be saying we need it for epilepsy, without a doubt. And I still think in today's society, people don't understand the severity of epilepsy and how life-threatening the condition actually is. Epilepsy is just so unpredictable. Just yeah. when you feel you're going through a good stage in somebody's life who has epilepsy, mm -hmm. you plan something and then suddenly just like that, it can strike. So Levi and Lucas, who are 13 identical twin boys, they don't get that aura. So right. there's no warning that they're gonna have a seizure. It's just too quick all the time. So I could be sat next to either one of them and they could just drop straight to the floor. And my natural instincts are always not quick enough. And as a parent, that's how I always feel like I'm failing as well. I've never seen myself have a seizure. Yeah. And so I don't understand how scary it is to onlookers. And I would always get so frustrated when I come around from a seizure and people would be panicking over me and putting me in a recovery position and calling an ambulance. Yeah. And I'd just be like, leave me alone, I'm fine. But my husband explained to me, you just can't understand what a scary thing it is. People never see it and suddenly, there's all these like movements going on. You're breathing, you're going blue, you're going, and I, I just don't, I just come around and feel tired. You know, I don't, I don't yeah. see that side of it. So I can't imagine what it must be like when it's your boys and you're so, you're so helpless to it. Epilepsy actually must be there. Every step of the way for people affected by the condition. But to do that, we need your support. Please donate today. And help make that happen. Click the donate button now.